Tech family, I really like this laptop and you know how rare that is for me to say. I'm super tough when it comes to laptops and this is one of the first ones in 2021 that I actually like. So here's why. It's just a joy to use. It's really comfortable because not only is it insanely lightweight, but it runs very cool and quiet. It performs as well, if not better than other Windows Ultrabooks and it has a comfortable keyboard, accurate trackpad and an insanely good screen. By the way, I'm Josh and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video you like what you watched, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of effort that goes into making these. Funnily enough, I've actually had this laptop sitting in the cupboard for a while, but I thought no one would be interested in a review of it. It seems like yet another expensive Intel Tiger Lake laptop. Plus, it's been out for a while and there's already been some reviews of it, so I was just going to send it straight back to Lenovo. Side note, most of the laptops I review on this channel I buy myself. That's because the laptop either isn't available through a review program or I want to get the laptop faster so I can get a review out for you guys as quick as possible. I also feel it makes me less biased, but this one is one of the rarer ones that I did get as a review unit. Obviously, Lenovo hasn't had any say in this review, nor would I accept this unit if they did. Back to the story. So I really wasn't going to review the Nano, but one evening I decided to crack it open and give it a try. Boy, was I pleasantly surprised. You see, I normally use the Dell XPS 9310 or maybe the HP Spectre 14 for my own casual use, browsing the web, writing scripts, online shopping, failing miserable at online dating. You get the drift. I tend to save my heavy duty work like gaming, programming or video editing for larger laptops like the HP Omen or the MacBook Pro 16. Anyway, if you've ever used a Windows Ultrabook, be it AMD or Intel, you'll know that they suffer from one major problem, heat. And that translates to the high temperatures you would feel when using the laptop and of course fan noise that's generated to cool it. Well, to my shock, this laptop suffers from neither. In fact, it runs so much cooler than any of my other Windows Ultrabooks, and I'm talking for lightweight tasks here, that I was convinced that there must be some intense throttling going on to keep it cool. Well, I'm pleased to say that I didn't observe anything of the sort when running my tests. In fact, this laptop actually performed very well. Take a look at how it stacks up against its main Windows competitors. Now, its single core doesn't appear quite as good, but it's explainable because the processor in this unit is an i7-1160G7, which has a slower single core max speed than the i7s you'd normally see in these kind of laptops, such as the 1165G7. That being said, it's still very competitive in single core. Now in multi-core, this processor actually beats out the competitors with their supposed faster processor. Even when I ran the laptop for 10 minutes with its CPU maxed out, I did notice a drop in performance due to the need to keep the laptop cool, which is expected. However, it still beat out the best Windows Intel Ultrabooks with a supposed faster processor. Drilling in further, you can see that this laptop drew a solid 35 watts of power and then dropped to a sustained 18 watts for longer loads. And its clock speed burst at 4.4 GHz and then sustained at 2.6 GHz or core. This once again proves that the performance you get out of an Ultrabook is really nothing to do with how it's marketed, such as stating that this processor is a 15 watt one versus the 28 watt TDP of the i7-1165G7. It's all about how well the manufacturer can cool the processor, what temperature they allow the processor to run at, and how much power they choose to deliver to it. I talk a lot about how misleading this is in my HP NV14 review, where its i5 processor destroys every Intel i7 processor for Ultrabooks that I've tested. If you haven't watched that one, I'll link it below. Now, when under load, the surface temperatures of the keyboard deck were definitely warm and the underside felt hot. But as mentioned, for lightweight use, which is what I believe you should be doing on this laptop, it felt way cooler to the touch than any other Windows Ultrabook that I've used. Even the CPU runs a couple of degrees cooler than the normal 100 Celsius that these Ultrabooks hit. So considering that this laptop outperforms other laptops and remains impressively cool and quiet for lightweight use, it must have some crazy good cooling solution, right? Nope. When I opened up the laptop, I saw a single cooling fan with only one heat pipe. I really don't know how Lenovo is achieving this, but I'll take it. The laptop performed so well that I thought, why not check out how it handles coding and video editing? I was delighted to see that it is amongst the fastest laptops that I've tested to start the integrated development environment IntelliJ and to compile and debug a Java Enterprise Edition project. 
Even reloading a large MySQL database was very fast on this laptop, more so than its hotter and louder feeling competitors. In video editing, where I exported a large Premiere Pro 4K project, it was on par with its competitors. I did try editing this 4K project and found the experience very smooth. In full transparency though, this project is from one of my older videos. I would absolutely not expect this laptop to handle some of my newer 4K videos, which are incredibly complex. Even my large and powerful gaming laptops struggle with them. The next thing I really like is the screen. It's just awesome. I normally don't like nor recommend 13 inch screens. That's because I don't feel you see enough information on them to be productive, particularly if it's your primary laptop. So I usually recommend a minimum of 14 inches, but the amount you can comfortably see on this screen is actually a lot. That's because the amount of information you can comfortably see on a laptop screen without needing to squint is determined by many factors. How bright the screen is, how sharp and pixel dense it is, the screen's contrast, the aspect ratio, whether the panel is reflective, oh, and yes, of course, the screen's size. Well, even though this screen is only 13 inches, it does very well on many of those other factors. It's got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, matte non-glossy display, and it's crazy bright with good contrast. It also has an unusual 2160 by 1350 resolution that is a little sharper than the normal 1920 by 1080 you'd find in these sorts of laptops. Long story short, what I found was running the laptop at 125% window scaling was very comfortable for my eyes. When you do the math, that means I'm seeing the same vertically as a 1080 pixel display. Normally, I would only set window scaling to see the equivalent of a 1080 pixel display by setting it at say 100% on one of those screens when the laptop is say 14 or 15 inches. This is a really decent amount of vertical screen real estate and you should be able to get some solid work done for applications that mostly go down the page like writing a Word document. And honestly, it really speaks of how good I found this screen. Also, in terms of personal enjoyment when using it, I really like the white balance on the display. To my eyes, the white just feels right. It doesn't feel like it has any hint of a blue or red tint to it that some of the laptop screens do. Oh, and there was no backlight bleed on my model, unlike my Dell XPS 13, which has some annoying subtle backlight bleeding. And I didn't notice any PWM flickering used to lower the brightness. Now on top of how cool and quiet the laptop runs for lightweight tasks and the excellent screen, there are a bunch of other things that combine to make this laptop very comfortable to use. The first is how lightweight it is at only two pounds. The next is the keyboard. Although it is shallower than a normal ThinkPad keyboard, it still has that signature ThinkPad feel to it. ThinkPads have some of the most comfortable keyboards that you can get on a laptop. They have this really satisfying click to them. This laptop is no exception, just a little shallower on the travel. I'd give the keyboard an 8 out of 10 for comfort. On par with other top tier keyboards in thin and light laptops like the Dell XPS, but not quite at the lofty heights of the HP Spectre 14 or Microsoft Surface Books. And it is a little more comfortable than the keyboards in Apple's MacBooks. Now, ThinkPads do have an unusual layout where the function and control keys are swapped. I couldn't find a way to swap these keys in Lenovo's Vantage software, which is inconvenient, but I could change it in the BIOS. Other things like the backlight worked well, although Notebook Check noted that running the backlight at its max setting did chew a decent amount of battery, so they recommend turning it down a little bit when you're running on battery power. The trackpad is very comfortable and accurate to use. I personally wish that they didn't have the red nipple trackpad system as the space taken up for those buttons could be used to make the trackpad larger. The overall build quality of the laptop is excellent. It feels very solid. Speakers are downward facing, but they got loud enough even if you're using the laptop on the blanket and the quality was pretty good. Oh, and I did test Ubuntu Linux. Wi-Fi, function keys, sound, etc. all worked perfectly out of the box. My only note is you may get this dummy output sound error, which I got on both Fedora and Ubuntu. When I installed the full version of Ubuntu, not running trial mode off the USB stick, this issue went away. Battery life was surprisingly solid. When I turned down the brightness just a little bit, I got a comfortable eight hours for casual use like browsing the net, watching Twitch using Microsoft Word, etc. Surprisingly, I thought this laptop would be super expensive, but I was pleasantly surprised to see it on sale at $1,149 with a decent config with 16 gig of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. It did have a slower 1130G7 processor, but it should be fast enough for most lightweight uses. So what's there not to like about this laptop? Actually, not much. The main thing I found is that Zoom doesn't work on it. It literally goes into a cycle of crashing and restarting. I tried both the integrated webcam and Logitech Streamcam, same result. I checked online to see if others were having the issue and they were indeed. This needs to be addressed in a software update as it is a real problem for anyone working from home who's required to use Zoom for meetings. And ThinkPads are meant to be designed for work use. 
Please note though, the webcam did work in other apps like Google Meets. Here's how the webcam looks and sounds in excellent lighting conditions. I think it's pretty bad. It does have a privacy filter at the top though. The only other things that I didn't like about this laptop were minor. For example, having all the USB-C ports on one side meant I had to run a cable around the back if my power outlet was on the other side of the laptop. Anyway, let's wrap up. I really like this laptop for my specific use case where I like having a small portable laptop for tasks like browsing the web, writing scripts, etc. It is the most comfortable laptop that I've personally used to date for this. I think it's a more comfortable option than dealing with the heat and fan noise of the Dell XPS 9310 or the HP Spectre 14. And its lighter weight is definitely a welcome bonus. That is, so long as you don't have to use Zoom or need a longer lasting battery. That being said, if you are open to switching to a Mac laptop, I do still think the MacBook Air and Pro are probably a little better all round. Their CPUs are definitely faster, their battery life is longer, their webcams and speakers are better, but they definitely aren't as portable or lightweight as this one, and I found their keyboards a little less comfortable. Look, in my personal case, I'm either going to replace the XPS with a Nano, because the heat and fan noise of my other laptops is driving me batty, and I'm quite prone to being batty or perhaps the new X1 Carbon 9th Gen that I just bought and unboxed will be the one. So make sure you're subscribed for that review. Anyway, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up as I would certainly appreciate it. And if you want specific laptop advice about your purchase decision, please join our Discord server where vetted laptop advisors are standing by to help you out. Go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.